This is the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. It is the flagship model in EcoFlow's newest portable power station lineup. EcoFlow knocked it out of the park when they developed the original River Series, but they couldn't stop at good enough. Over the last two years, they continued to develop and refine the River 2 lineup, resulting in a power station that, although it carries the same name, is completely new. The River 2 Pro has a bigger battery, supports higher loads, Bluetooth connectivity, and now has a longer warranty. The system is backed by a five-year warranty, which is one of the longest in the portable power station industry. With all these improvements, you would expect to see a higher price for this package. But one feature EcoFlow didn't increase with this redesign was the price. Other than that, I believe there is one feature that EcoFlow could add that would make this thing even better than it already is. So make sure to watch the entire video to get all of the details. Check the links in the description for the current price and any feature updates. Now that I've introduced this power station, let's take a closer look and find out if it lives up to its claims and if it's worth the price. The Pro weighs in at 17.2 pounds and measures 10.6 inches wide, 10.2 inches deep from the front to the back of the handle, and 8.9 inches tall. It has a lot of features for such a small footprint. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you don't like it, give it a thumbs up anyway. There are four ways to charge the River Pro 2. You can use a wall charger, a car charger, the USB-C port, and solar panels. It will accept up to 940 watts through the AC input and can recharge from zero to 100% in as little as 70 minutes. Now, I personally would not put that much power into it unless I needed a fast recharge. There is a setting in the app that you can adjust to manage the recharge rate, and I believe that by lowering it, you can avoid degrading the battery early. It also accepts up to 220 watts of solar power, which is on par with most devices of this size. But what is impressive is that it can take up to 50 volts. 50 is a lot more than the usual 30 volts, so you can run some solar panels in series that you would otherwise need to run in parallel. Additionally, you can pump 100 watts into or out of the USB-C jack and finally accepts up to 100 watts from your standard automotive outlet. All right, now I'm gonna test two things. First, I'm gonna take about a 20 minute drive. I'm gonna try to charge this with the car charger as I'm driving. And then when I get to my destination, I have a solar panel and I'm gonna test the solar input using the solar panel that I have. We ended up driving about 10 minutes and we were putting in a solid 100 watts for the entire trip. And I went from about 3% to about 6%. This thing will take maybe six to eight hours to charge at 100 watts. So keep that in mind if you are planning to charge with your car, it will take a while to charge. So now I'm gonna take about 10 minutes. I'm gonna hook up the solar panel and I'm gonna see how much power I can pull with the solar panel. So this case is like a kickstand system for the solar panel. I think it's a little complicated, but it looks really good. I gotta put these clips in. So I repositioned the solar panel a little bit and now I'm pulling 94 watts, which is a pretty decent amount of power for a solar panel of this size. This EcoFlow solar panel is a 110 watt solar panel. I've been sitting here about 20 minutes, consistently getting about 90 to 95 watts out of the panel, which is pretty good. Usually a 100 watt panel, I would expect to get about 80 watts out of. Also, it is mid-November, so the sun isn't directly above us, it's more off to the side. So I wonder if the sun was higher, if I would be able to get even more power out of the solar panel. EcoFlow also supplied this solar panel with a pretty long cable. I wanna say this cable is at least 15 feet long, so if I needed to, I could put my solar panel anywhere around the vehicle and still have access to charging. As I get ready for winter, I am gonna go ahead and hook this up to my rooftop solar panel. That is a 180 watt solar panel, so I should be able to get a little bit more power out of that solar panel versus the folding solar panel. And I'm gonna stage the EcoFlow box right here in my minivan. I'm gonna use this long cable that EcoFlow supplied and I'm gonna run it to the solar panel on the roof of my minivan. That's a pretty decent cable. Hopefully I can get these connectors undone. I don't have my connector tool with me, so put a little pressure there, a little pressure there. One. And that one was a lot easier. All right, so going over here, I've got to disconnect these carabiners. 
I think with practice I'll get better at that. One advantage of a folding solar panel versus the one on the roof is I can position it anywhere and I can always put it so that it faces the sun. But the rooftop panel, it's always flat and if you're parking in the shade, it doesn't get any sunlight. So there are some disadvantages to that as well. So I have disconnected these before. They're actually a lot easier to disconnect than the other one. Maybe because they're getting a little old. But now I can just hook these MC4 connectors up. Hopefully the polarity is correct. It usually is. Yeah. Make sure this isn't knotted up at all. And I'm just gonna toss this up to the front. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's see what kind of power we get out of the 180 watt solar panel into the device. So I'm getting about 60 watts from the 180 watt solar panel. I think the main reason I'm not getting a large amount of power is because of the angle of the sun and that solar panel is actually a little dirty. So the best thing about having that panel on my roof and having it plugged into the EcoFlow River Pro 2 is that I can close the doors. I can let this thing charge all day long without thinking about it anymore today. So let's hit the road. I'll check back in in a little bit. There is currently a love-hate relationship going on with this handle. Some folks love it and others hate it. It is a solid fixed handle, but when sitting the device down, the lower front edge is the first thing that touches the ground. So if you aren't careful, the lower lip can get scratched up pretty easily. Also, EcoFlow dialed back the design cues and went with something a little more plain. Given all the upgrades, I'll take brawn over beauty for this design. EcoFlow did miss one opportunity with this flat surface. Many consumer electronics nowadays have wireless charging, but this flat surface does not support it. And this would have been a perfect place to put one. The AC inverter has four outlets and is designed to power loads up to 800 watts continuously and supports surges up to 1600 watts. But with X-Boost mode, you can power continuous loads up to 1600 watts, such as coffee makers and hot plates. EcoFlow claims that you can run up to 80% of high wattage home appliances in X-Boost mode. One good thing about this AC panel is that it also serves as a home backup for small devices with a 30 millisecond changeover speed during power outages. The USB panel has three USB-A ports, putting out 12 watts each, and one USB-C port, delivering up to 100 watts of power. The DC panel has one 12.6 volt or 126 watt outlet, and there are two 5521 ports rated at 36 watts. The real question is, does anyone use these ports anymore? The most powerful device that I have to pull from the DC outlet is charging another power station that is rated to accept up to 100 watts. And I can confirm that the Echo Flow does pull at least 100 watts. I don't have anything that pulls 130 watts to test the max capacity of this device, but I'm pretty satisfied with getting 100 watts out of this outlet. The display on the EcoFlow River Pro 2 is pretty nice. It shows input wattage, output wattage, percentage battery remaining, as well as time to discharge or charge based on the current load. Now I'm going to top off the River 2 Pro using AC power. The EcoFlow is completely topped off. It has a 768 watt hour battery. I'm gonna use the AC inverter, which is rated at 800 watts continuous, and my heat ray to pull 800 watts and find out how much of that 768 watt hours I can get using this ray gun. All right, I'll check back in at the end of this test to find out what was the battery conversion efficiency for the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. So we managed to pull 590 watt hours and it ran for about 45 minutes. 590 watt hours isn't too bad. I did have over 800 watts coming out of the device for the entire test. The thing is rated at 800 watts. And so the cooling fan was running for the entire time. I imagine that cooling fan probably pulls at least 10, if not 30 watts. Now I'm gonna charge it back up and then do the same test with a 200 watt load and see if I get a better result. Ah! 
With so much power going into the device, it's understandable that the fan will run at max speed. In this case right now, I'm only pulling about 250 watts and I just heard the fan shut off. So the fan doesn't run that much unless you're putting that high amount of power into it. You can throttle the amount of power going into the system using the app and by throttling the amount of power that goes into the device during recharging you can limit the amount of noise that you hear for example this thing will take a massive 940 watts but you could probably recharge it at a 300 watt rate and get a little bit less noise and some additional longevity on this battery so running a load of about 200 watts gave me 638 watt hours for a pretty impressive 83% conversion. Additionally, the power station ran for about three hours and 17 minutes with that load. This power station has a 768 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Lithium iron phosphate is currently the best battery chemistry available for portable power stations. So EcoFloat has checked the box with this battery. The lithium iron phosphate cells in the River 2 Pro are safe, durable, highly efficient, even in warm temperatures, and they're very reliable. It is also rated to retain up to 80% of its capacity after 3,000 complete discharge cycles. That's around 10 years of use at six complete cycles per week. There are a few other companies still using the more volatile NMC batteries, so make sure you check what chemistry your battery has before you get your next device. If it doesn't have an LFP battery, you are losing a lot of durability. The battery management system includes overvoltage protection, short circuit protection, low temperature, low voltage, and overcurrent protection. Additionally, low temperature protection is vital to safely recharging below freezing temperatures, which can damage a battery in as little as one exposure. So overall, I feel that the EcoFlow River 2 Pro and the River 2 series in general is actually a very good product for 2022. I believe that for 2022 and going on into 2023, this is going to be one of the top competitors or one of the highest quality power stations you can get for the price. The current price is $649, but there are frequently sales dropping the price into the $450 range. So that may happen over the next couple weeks or it may happen in the next few months. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you have any ideas for tests that you would like to see me do on this power station or other power stations in the future, please leave a comment and be sure to watch this video and I'll see you on my next adventure.